All day we've ridden through the hills, in rain and cold, through patches of sun that broke through holes in the outer frills of clouds that let their shadows run. Headstrong from the peaks like the charging ranks of revolt to the hammer of Edward Longshanks. We war dogs clank as our horses plod from woodland caves forsaken by God to deserted villages past barren fields. Our bright helms, herbucks, our riding shields hang heavy this eve. My eyes play tricks. The trees whistle hate from a Welsh wind's kicks where an outlaw poet speaks an ancient tongue. Cambria's curse that wrong will follow wrong. Put them all to death, our orders from the crown. Strangle their songs of resistance one by one. I have seen some burn, I have seen some drown. Only once did I ask, Lord, what have we done? When one I skewed upon mine own lance, who continued to sing as I, in speechless trance, watched his bloodied lips begin to weave the woof, weave the warp, as he died upon my sharpened tooth. But one native bard remains within the land to cry the renegade's mournful tune. A grisly band sworn to fight, to die at his command, their hands as crimson as my helmet's plume. Who would willingly rip themselves asunder? Madmen are fools, we have no time to ponder. My sovereign would be overlord of all the isles, from the towers of Julius, his castle courts, to Caledonia beyond the Roman wall. From these wild lands of barbarous hordes, once quelled, we'll smite the Turnar Nog. Across Hibernia, Edward's name we'll scrawl with swords as quills on the men of the bog. As we've done here, on dreary Arvon shore, ghastly pale and smeared with gore, Llewellyn's forces lie cold in silence, save for the ghosts of the last bards, companions, pockets of insurgents hidden in the mountains. Our hounds raise baying before our stallions. This night we'll skin our quarry's remains. They have his scent, this way he went, little more than an hour past. Crossed these falls, up he's crawled to yonder cliffs to stand aghast, like a prior stag of seven tines, a lone oak tree on a broken crag overlooking tumbling Conway. His hair, a swallowtail frosted pennant, his prophet's beard, a gwynaid blizzard. Instead of fleeing, he tears a cord of pure lament from his lyre, the next a note of disregard for this wretched life. It cuts through mail. As we ride up the track, he begins to wail and echo up through Snowdon's heights. Come, pirate king and thy chivalrous knights. Come and face thy fate as I face mine. Thine ambition will lead thee to the gates of hell, so sup my sweet nation's blood like wine. Thine chronicles will read what time will tell. Thine own empire will drown in a sea of blood. Thine heir will undo all that you deem good. Our fugitive's words are elemental, vulgar as raw as a lightning bolt. Each syllable a blacksmith's hammer on metal, each vowel a wound doused in salt. Not a poet laureate to entertain the court, or flatter princelings with fine phrases wrought like the dual goblets from an eastern shore, brought back as curios for Queen Eleanor. A fancy pilfered during the Ninth Crusade, smuggled back to England with a secret of glass. No, this druid's prayers ring with a torrent's rage. Coarse as a moorland campfire, black as burnt grass, his venomous tirade rides a swarm of plague rats that wreathe like smoke down the mountain track. Forward to arms, Mortimer cried. Over the din of this bard's feral verses. Onward, he has nowhere else to climb. Who'll put an end to his vile curses? Who'll tear out his tongue, bring me his hide, soap his lips, butcher his rhyme? Tonight, 
We bury their tales, their hoary propaganda. Tonight we craft a new story to hail of an English Prince of Wales. And yet, I half suspect our wild charge of blunder, the booming voice enough to freeze our lugs, turn them blue and open the gates to Anwen. Fearing an ambush from his fairy thugs along the ridges, a well-armed rock in a sling from our fallen foes, a sudden rain of arrows let loose from sorrow's tether. But ours is not a reason why, but to ride, to ride, and meet doom with a fixed grin. Sir Mortimer leads our gleaming array, with horns resounding for his historic day. But no assault from hand or sling or bow descends from Snowdon's shaggy slopes. But above the gorge, a bedraggled crow takes to the thin air like the bard's last hope, and we surmise this man to be alone, singing a mantra that makes the mountain groan. For the final remnant of a guerrilla war, dismounting, I race up the screed-covered floor, drawing my sword to end our just and noble cause. Placing our actions against the code of chivalry, many of our company feel the urge to pause, questioning for a moment the extent of misery that will follow our lives like a grim shadow. His prophecies hold the chill of a hollowed barrel. Come to me, my boy, the old boar calls. Let me weave your warp, your thread I'll spin. Inching ever closer, over gnarled rocks I crawl. Know me better, man. He claims the name Taliesin. I was the child once known as Gwion, who supped the broth brewed by the witch Keredwen. And since that day I can become all things, from the snows of the high passes to a hornet's sting. And you think your sword will put an end to my tune? You think to claim my head for your tyrant king? If you ground down my bones, I'll return like the moon. Sword in my right hand, my left amazed begins to swing, and he, unarmed, but for his lyre, laughs as he plays, a cackle that scorches like fire. Finish this! Brave Mortimer yells from below. The day has come and gone, the night heralds snow. But what dread truths I'm told as I circle his rock. Things of a future I'd rather not know. I'm branded with words I've tried to overthrow. Your death, my love, and that of our line, our stock. Both of our boys are to die whilst in their prime. One on the battlefield, me carrying for the dark flock. The other, he says, will die with his head on the block. And our good name shall be trampled into the grime. More of his obscenities than my stomach couldn't stand. So screaming, I thrust my sword through his pale grief. Slash lunge, lunge and hack to fulfil my lord's demands. But my point merely rips a gash in his sleeve. Spreading wide his arms. He shows me his palms, then leaps from the cliff to plunge through space, to vanish into the spray of the river Conway. No mangled corpse struck the rocks with terrible haste, but I watched a dove gently glide through the lace of the falls and fly on into the forest's darkening face. <laughs>